What's up, Tiger fans? It's Morgan here with The Morgan Thomas Show, and today I wanted to do something a little bit different than anything I've ever done. I've really never done something like this, so I wanted to try it out. Let me know what you think, if you enjoyed it or not, but I wanted to do a fan reaction, but not about a, sh a game, because I'm still not sure if I can do those without getting dinged on YouTube, but... I want to do a fan reaction of Wes Goodwin's first ever interview. I know it's been a couple of days. I actually haven't had a chance to sit down and watch it myself. So I'm looking forward to hearing from Wes Goodwin for the first time. I wanted to kind of watch it with you and give my reaction, maybe pause it as we go. It's about 24 minutes of his interview that he did post-practice, the first one ever with the media, uh, ask some questions. Now, you might not be able to hear the questions. A lot of times, the, the people asking the questions, the writers and the members of the media don't have a microphone or they're pointing the microphone to Wes or the person that they're interviewing. So you might not be able to hear the question, but I'll do my best to try to react to each of the questions and to each one of his comments. All right, before we get in the video though, make sure you like this video and you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can stay up to date on all of my exclusive Clemson content I try to put out every single week. All right, Tiger fans, let's go. Let's get this going here. So let me move the screen over and we'll get started. Yeah. First of all, I just want to say thanks to Coach Sweeney for having the faith in, in me to give me this great opportunity. Thanks to President Clements and uh, Graham and the rest of Clemson, Clemson University. And a uh, tremendous opportunity. And you guys far away. What was it like? When you know, did he call you? Did he text you? Did he tell you, you know, when he said, you're my guy? Yeah, he was actually, uh, when everything went down, he was in Las Vegas at the Raiders game, and uh, whenever Brand accepted the job, he called me up right away and uh, let me know the plan, and started rolling from there. Did you do a little run around the house? And how did you react when you hung the phone right Yeah, we were really, really excited, and uh, man, it unbelievable opportunity, and we're, we're fired up. Wes, did you have so you hear right out the gate, uh, Wes is thanking the president and Dabo Sweeney for the opportunity. Obviously, a completely different tone that you get from Brent Venables. Brent was a very intimidating person. I have a story that I'll save for another day of where I asked Brent a question and uh, you know, kind of uh, got a, a reaction that I wasn't expecting, but I maybe should have expected. But they're definitely a very intimidating person to ask a question of and uh, someone who would come right back at you. Um, you know, obviously Brent is, has been in the situation for a long time at the time I was asking him questions. So I know Wes Goodwin is going to have to make his own path in this role. It is very new to him, uh, being in front of the cameras. I know when I first started this show, the, I would not even want to show you what that video looked like. I mean, I still have it. And it's on Facebook somewhere, but I would not want to show you that video because it's just, I'm not polished as much as I am today. I'm not well-spoken as much as I am today. And, um, you know, there's always that nervousness. I remember the first time that I ever went on the radio with Walt Deptula, and he is extremely, extremely knowledgeable about every single sport possible. And um, it was just very intimidating. I was shaking. My hands were just shaking. Now, I have my own show right after Walt on Thursday nights, and... I don't, I don't really get nervous at all anymore. Um, and if it's a question I don't know, you know, hey, it's a question I don't know and I move on, right? But uh, again, you can already tell, I mean, he's a different person. He answers and, and, and presents himself differently. I'm sure he's going to grow as this continues. So let's keep going. A pretty good idea of like in recent years that this was going to be the arrangement if and when Brent decides to win. Yeah, I, I mean, I thought I had a great opportunity, and, uh, you know, me and Brand have worked great over the years, seven years together, and, uh, you know, have tremendous respect for him, and just came in every day with a, the mindset that I'm going to learn as much ball as I can from him, and, uh, you know, there's so many, so many great examples over the years where we almost, it was like we were thinking the same thing at the exact same time, you know, I... Uh, but yeah. So many Clemson fans know Coach Venables so well. He's just one of those figures that people know. What can you What can you tell them about you? Because maybe they don't know you as well. Yeah, you know, uh, 
I'm a, I'm a football junkie, you know, I love, love the game, you know, from my fer very first opportunity at Mississippi State, you know, I've completely immersed myself into trying to learn big picture, learn schemes, learn techniques and fundamentals, and, and just uh, love, love being on the field with the players, you know, that, that's why I got into this profession, to build, build great men of character through the game of football. And, uh, you know, that's the fun part, being around the guys in the locker room every day with me. I can only imagine who just recently screamed in the background as he was answering that question. That's why I was laughing there. Not at him, but whoever was screaming. Um, I mean, we know from what we've heard from him, he is someone who loves to study the game. I call him the Eric Spolstra, uh, someone who has been in the film room for a very long time. He's going to have to be able to convey that to the players. So, um, you know, that's going to be different from understanding it and being able to, to confirm with Brent Venables. Now he has to be Brent Venables and convey what he's seeing and convey it quickly. You know, um, people want immediate feedback and, and, and consistent feedback uh, and in the moment when you're a player. Uh, so he can't take time to reference something or go back and look at something in the film. He has to be able to articulate it right then and there. Sounds like he was doing that as he was Brent Venable's understudy. Again, you can't hear all the questions. I apologize. Yeah, but. Um, you know, uh, growing up, I always knew I wanted to coach college football and uh, work in the NFL. Never knew kind of how that would unfold. Had an opportunity growing up to go to Mississippi State. Started as a baseball manager, Ron Polk, legendary baseball coach there. And, uh, you know, just had the opportunity to get my foot in the door with football as a student assistant. And uh, Sylvester Kroon was the head coach there. And Woody McCorby was the offensive coordinator. Ellis Johnson was our defensive coordinator. Just an opportunity to get my foot in the door and just, you know, put my nose down, stay quiet, and just worked hard every day. Well, I like the, the nickname Wesley Chick. So, hey, uh, that started way back in the day at Mississippi State. You know, hopefully one day, Maybe I could be mentioned in the same sentence as Bill Belichick. You know, he's the best of all time. I have so much respect for what he's done over the years, eight Super Bowls, you know, countless other opportunities and accomplishments. So it's a fun name to be thrown around. Hopefully one day I live up to that. Once there were, there were so many I think, uh, you know, Bill Belichick, they call him Wes Lecek, if you didn't hear that, Wes Lecek. Uh, referencing that he is like Bill Belichick, and you know, like like he mentioned, if if that is the case, then um, good things to come. Parts of Brent that kind of made him uh, kind of force of nature, so many different elements. What do you think is the hardest part to replace? Uh, with which element do you think just walk into his? Um, you know. Off the top of my head, nothing really like stands out. You know, every day I'm just going to come in and be myself, you know, from an intensity standpoint and just being a raw, raw guy. You know, that's probably not me, but I'm going to get, you know, I'm going to get fired up at times. I, I, am, I am very passionate in my own way and, and that sort of deal. So, but just, I have to come in and be myself and uh, do things how, how I, 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 I do them. Wesley, one of the things. My first thought, and again, again, it is the first interview that we that I know of in in this role. I know that players get prepped. I, I don't know how much Wes got prepped for this. I I would hope that he did. Um, it seems like that. The, the public relations team could have prepped him a little bit better for the questions that he would be asked. Um, you know, it just doesn't seem like he has the answer to the questions uh, prepared. And, you know, when you, when you see players like seniors that are out there, when you see uh, Dabo Sweeney out there, a lot of times they give you that coaches speak uh, and Wes doesn't have that yet. And, and I don't really necessarily think that he – I like that because I don't like coaches just to give me whatever, just to say whatever, right? I don't like the, the scripted answer. But sometimes, you know, 
when you're talking about your history, when you're talking about how you're going to approach the game, when you're talking about your your leadership style. Um, I, I guess I guess you know just take some time to kind of practice those things, um, you know, with your team. Is that that people talk about you being the right hand man to a brand? What kind of what was your role in terms of every week preparing and, and, and helping this team? Yeah, just. So you can hear Brad there because he Brad Sinkiff is a radio guy, so he's projecting his voice, you know, compared to the others. Uh, scouting report wise, studying opponents, studying tendencies, anything we could gain from an advantage, and then obviously just schematically, you know, confirming or you know discussing ideas and that sort of thing. Just kind of being the leader of the, you know, opponent study and uh, studying personnel studying tendencies, that sort of deal, and just, uh, you know, I knew his expectations, he, he lined out and, and just uh, made sure everybody else did their job, and we all collaborated together, came up with a game plan every week. Sounds like he's... Like he's you on the way to kind of you know, show you, mentor you a little bit on how to do game day type stuff? Yeah, definitely. I think all great coaches are, are coaches of players and fellow fellow coaches around them, and, and definitely, you know, we would, we would talk another thing just to just to kind of pause him here but um he has uh he's probably surrounded by a ton of, of media members and uh from radio to writers to television personnel people that are a lot of people that are probably very confident and have been asking questions difficult questions uh and purposeful questions very often and and, and for a long time so that's another thing got to give him some slack he's still learning the gig um, and he's surrounded by a ton of people and, but you can, you can already tell when Brad was asking him a question about his preparation and his game planning, his eyes kind of lit up a little bit. He got more relaxed and comfortable with his response. So that already tells you that that's his bread and butter, his bread and butter talking about rah, rah guy and things like that. Not his, not his specialty. Everybody has specialties, right? But in this case, we're seeing that. Wes is is feeling more comfortable answering those questions. And so that leads you to believe that, again, he's a mastermind with gameplay analysis, research, film, study, uh, play, uh, play development, and um, we'll see. All right, let's go. You know, what he's thinking in this situation, you know, his thoughts about coverages, pressures, that sort of deal, personnel, how to take, you know, matchups and that sort of deal. So just total, total education of the game, you know, just being in that room every day. Just in terms of your, your new role with these goal practices, you know, what, what are your realistic goals in terms of your, to learn and accomplish this time? Yeah, our goals are, are the same standard that of defense that Coach Winnie, you know, set forth day one to play, play defense at a high level. You know, our defense isn't, a, isn't based off, off of one person. Clemson's defense has always been about players. And, you know, our expectations is to continue to play great defense and even try to ramp it up a notch. I mean, in terms of just, just doing the day-to-day -day and, and, you know, game day being PC and stuff like that, what do you want to learn? Yeah, just, uh, you know, taking full control, you know, and just uh, being the guy and running it, all the situational football and, and obviously calling the game and just, you know, getting in the flow of game and in the flow of the game and just, you know, just figuring out who I am as a play caller and, and running things from the sideline. Obviously, Christmas Day is a week from today. But... I, I just wonder who is moving that light on him. I have an idea who it might be with a giant light, uh, but I'm not going to say. But that's also very distracting when you have somebody moving a giant uh, spotlight, you know, while you're answering a question. But anyways, um, again, you know, I think he has what he wants to do out there. He, he knows what he wants to do. He probably has a really good day-to-day -day game plan articulating it to the media uh, less than desired right now. Um, and that again, that will come with him being in the role. I mean, everybody has to, you know, rip the Band-Aid off and, uh, you know, get used to it. 
but will Christmas Day be the 29th for you? And what do you think you'll be feeling pre-game? Yeah, I think I'm going to be real. Well, to go back to your point about Christmas Day, Christmas Day is going to be the 22nd before we go down to Orlando. So uh, we're not going to haul all our toys down for the girls and whatnot. But yeah, you know, 29th is going to be my birthday's on the 28th. So I'll turn 37 and then game day on the 29th. So it's going to be. 37. I'm sitting here 34 on a YouTube channel. What did I do? I'm excited to for sure. You mentioned uh, play calling. Oh, okay. Yeah, you mentioned play calling, something you haven't done before. I mean, you kind of knew this might be coming at some point. How I mean, you can see David Hood there. He's a lot taller than me and taller than Wes. I don't know how tall Wes is, but I'm assuming Wes is more my height. You prepared yourself. I to prepared be every day as if I'm the play caller. You know, I would run through games, and I, I would, in my mind, play the game out. You know, I'm going to call this in this situation. That worked. That wouldn't be a great call. So every day for the last 10, 12 years that I've been in this profession, I've always thought big picture, you know, so preparing myself for this moment. So it, it's been years and years of, uh, you know, uh, time spent studying the game. Yeah. Do you feel like you have something to prove at all? I mean, <laughs> just because people may not know you've never been a position coach, never done yeah, any of that before. I mean, my expectations for myself are good enough. You know, I don't have to prove anything to anybody else. You know, I, I have really expe high expectations for myself, and that's all that I care about. See, that was a great answer, too, from him. I feel like he, he – when he was immediately asked, you know, about his preparation, about him be having confidence, pl making play calls, he again he he just went right back to being extremely confident in his answer. And and the other one, the other answer where he's talking about himself and you know what he does day to day and you know what type of person he is, he's not the best, at least yet. But when it comes to talking about the playbook, talking about preparation, talking about what he's done to practice uh, and, and call plays, he, he again, he gets even more perky. Now, he's still subdued compared to Brent Venables, but you can you can see it is different when he's talking about certain things. Along with play calling, that was close to you. For a nice play, draw it up. Like, what does that look like in-game? How, how quickly do you recommend the concepts and then pass it along? Yeah, I mean, we use that for like in ser series adjustments and that sort of deal, but all of that comes through pre weekly preparation and time spent in the film room. You know, you can tell stuff pre snap, this, this, and this are coming. So just, you know, all the preparation part of it. Do you do a week ahead, like scouting like Yeah, for the most part, our support staff, they'll work a week or two in advance you know, to get everything ready for, for like. Say coming in on Sunday, like we'll have all this uh, research done and give it to the staff. We heard that you've had chances to leave and go other places most of the time. Did you have a sense that at some point in time that, that this was going to be the route you were going to go and you were going to be able to choose what you wanted to do? Yeah, you know, I'm a bloom where, where I'm planted guy. You know, I, I'm in no rush to leave a place like Clemson. The people here are unbelievable. You know, it's, it's more about the people. Than, than the the job to me, you know, and I love this place. I love Coach Sweeney. I love Culture everybody fit. in this building. I have great respect for everybody. Going to give great his respect all respect for the university. So I, I I'm a blue loyal. I'm planted guy. So I we've set our roots here and, and plan to be here for the long haul. And just whatever comes comes. We're going to see a lot of similarities to what Brent did. Or you going to put your staff on some things. And I guess what are going to be some of the similarities and some of the differences? Yeah, philosophically, we're both uh, very aggressive. You know, I, I want to take the fight to the offense and uh, be very aggressive play calling wise. And, and uh, so philosophically, we're very similar. Obviously, I'll put my stamp on it. Some great concepts that I've learned from other other places I've been and, you know, continue to grow our scheme and uh, do a, trying to stay at the forefront of college football. So what are some of the big stipulations that you Yeah, B.A. is one of the best coaches I've ever been around. Just an unbelievable guy. Very genuine, down to earth. Very well liked and respected by players in that locker room. You know, just being myself. You know, don't don't try to be anybody else. Just be myself. He's, 
you know, when he w would always come into the building, he spoke to everyone, made everyone feel welcome, you know, genuine, you know, genuinely cared about everybody. So those were, that's probably the biggest thing that I took away from my time. It's a lot of blitzes. So yeah, definitely. <laughs> no risk it, no biscuit, right? That's what his favorite saying. Yeah, exactly. Oh, from a recruiting. No risk it, no biscuit. That's what Brent Venables said. I mean, I used to call Brent Venables Blitz Venables. I still would call him that, but he's definitely a guy who blitzes a ton. And I think it works in the college schemes. I think what you want to do is you want to put pressure on the quarterback. And nine times out of ten, the quarterbacks aren't good enough in college at the college level to pick you apart. Now, you get into those situations where the offensive coordinating can pick you apart or the offensive line can hold up long enough to where – that blitzing aggressive strategy doesn't work like Ohio State, like LSU, like, um, you know, Alabama in certain situations, those things don't work. But for the majority of the time, if you pressure the quarterback quickly and often enough, things will break down and um, you'll have more opportunities to make plays and turn the ball over and even force three and out. So, and also, again, it seems like his guy, he's been with Bruce Arians. He said B.A. He's talking about Bruce Arians and the NFL and his, his background and experience there. This guy definitely has the resume to be able to be a play caller, you know, probably even in the NFL. Um, I, I read a quote where Ellis Johnson said the position coach part is really not even that big of a deal because being a position coach is not the hardest thing uh, there is, I think, there's a lot. He, he said there's ten other things that are more important than being a position coach to be a defensive coordinator, and I think obviously being a figurehead, being addressed in the media, but also being a a, a play calling genius. Now it's not just going to be him by himself, which I think bodes to what Dabo Sweeney was going, uh, Dabo Sweeney's plan is, is that it's not West by himself. We're seeing West by himself in this video, but it's not West by himself in the coordinator position. It is West and Mickey Khan and hopefully those two together will be able to balance themselves out. Wes being the, the more uh, quiet killer type guy. And then your, your, your play, play calling, um, analytics mastermind. And then maybe Mickey Kahn being more of your, your rah, rah guy, your former previous head coach at a high school level. It's probably a little bit more rah, rah, kiss baby, sign autographs type guy than, than Wes. Them two together could be, could be very lethal. Standpoint. That's something that you know, you've been kind of behind the scenes. Maybe you haven't done as much of that. How comfortable are you with going to recruits home and saying, "Hey, this is what this is why you need to come to Tennessee." Yeah, very, very comfortable with that. Obviously, I haven't spent much time out on the road, but just being able to paint a vision for this is what it's going to look like. And recruiting is just about relationships. You know, at the end of the day, you know, building that relationship, building the credibility and rapport with the players, and that sort of deal. So, you know, you do that every day. Recruiting takes time, a lot of investment. You know, just nobody's going to outwork me kind of mentality that I have. So just continuing to, to develop those relationships for anyone. You know, anyone. So you're excited and you're embracing it. Yeah, definitely. So this, this is a great opportunity. You know, everybody works for these opportunities and they come at different times. So you just prepare for these opportunities and when it's your time, next man up. I guess what were your players' reactions when they, when they heard the news? Did they kind of feel like it was coming already beforehand? They were fired up and excited. So that that's the thing that means the most to me is the players in this locker room. You know, all of them are all in, committed. We haven't lost anybody since that, that news. So that's really been a special, special deal for me. I guess how did uh... – you know, that's super important right there. I mean, that is really the, the 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 first and foremost and first and last, the beginning and end question. Uh, the players are okay with it. The players that know him, that have been around him, support him. And as a fan, myself, I got to support him. As uh, someone who likes college football, I got to give him a chance. Someone who enjoys leadership development and seeing people grow and seeing their potential um, you gotta, you gotta be excited about it. It's a new era for Clemson, and Dabo Sweeney has put trust in in Wes and Mickey Khan, and um, I think that with the players being excited and jumping up and down, as as what we've heard in the locker room, being we've also seen on Twitter where a ton of players, starters from Makuba to uh, Trey Williams to a ton of other players on on Twitter, KJ Henry, uh, I can't name a few more, but 
basically all of them saying that they come out and support Wes and uh, the hiring there. And, you know, really, that's all that really matters. I mean, can Wes go into a uh, recruit's home and win over a mom and dad? Um, only time will tell. I mean, you know, I feel like that if he paints a picture, if he really loves and, and values and is loyal to Clemson and and what they're doing and can can speak the language for those players that are really analytical and really focused on the playbook and and getting to the next level, he can he can promote the fact that he's been at the NFL. He can promote the fact that he is an analytic mastermind, right? He knows the plays before they're happening, three plays before they're happening. You know, so um, I think with him and then Mickey Kahn by his side playing the more, like I said, kissing babies, shake, shaking hands kind of thing, uh, signing autographs type guy, maybe more rah-rah type guy, I think it would work well together. Uh, Coach Sweeney tell the players, I think he said that it might have been kind of a special moment where he kind of told them, uh, what do you remember from when when you were introduced? Yeah, they were they were fired up, so... I guess, did he just say, Wes is the guy? Like, what did he say? What do you remember from the players? Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to elaborate on okay. team meetings and stuff like that. That, that goes to Coach Sweeney. So, okay. but, but they're excited and, and ready for this opportunity. Wes, when you heard that Brent got the job, like that moment, were you thinking to yourself, I'm probably the guy? Like, what was going through your mind? What were you thinking? So, not sure? Like, I'm just curious. Yeah, I was just waiting on the phone call. So, so you thought so. you thought it was. I was good either way, so uh, so I, I was just waiting to talk to both of them to see, to see how it things unfolded. Do you have a photograph of Henry? That's what they say. So, Do you? I don't know if I've been clinically diagnosed with that, but... <laughs> Okay, so there's Larry Williams asking the the tough questions. Or do you have a photographic memory or not? Do you? Please tell me now. Um, <laughs> I love Larry and uh, Tiger Illustrated. There, I, you know, do you really is is can you really be have a photographic memory? I don't know. I I think it's just old wives' tale, right? I don't know. Maybe it is really a thing. Um, but if he does, again, I talked about it in other videos. Could be the reason why everybody thought Clemson was stealing signs is this guy right here. Yeah, I'm good sign stealing. <laughs> so that's not not my job. Yeah. But that's like one of the things that all the you know people that work with you say that you just have the ability to see pretty much all eleven or all twenty two what they've done and diagram it a second later. When did you notice that you had that gift? Uh, how would you figure um, that out? I guess probably kind of in two thousand nine when I came here, the way that we kind of structured things uh, defensively and just you know. Kind of with some of the stuff that I did on game days then, just kind of preparing me for that. Some schools have five, six girlfriends, LSU. Clemson University has kids running around in practice. What is this age about you? What you say about Oh, I'm fired up about Wade. I mean, he's definitely a Clemson kid. He's exactly what we want from a, a program standpoint. Just an unbelievable family, uh, hard worker, smart, tough, savvy, physical, intelligent, plays fast and violent. He's long, you know, he's going to fit right in with the linebacker group. All those kids are great kids and unselfish and just an overall team guy. So uh, we're, we're fired up to have him. Coach, obviously, Coach, defensive backs. How do you prepare to coach linebackers? What will that be like for you, kind of adding that position? Well, I've been around linebackers since I started day one, probably more so than I have defensive backs. So, just I've always learned, uh, you know, linebackers is the glue to the defense. So the front end ties in with the back end, and so just you know, uh, day one when I got my foot in the door in football, I was with the linebackers with Ellis Johnson, Kevin Steele. Paul Torbush, uh, obviously uh, QB, you know, linebacker coach. So I've worked with all those those guys. Had the opportunity to work in the secondary as well, Arizona, uh, briefly. And, uh, so but just understanding how all the, the run fits and the coverages all tie in together. You know, I think linebackers and safeties, there's a lot of carryover. And those are all good linebacker coaches. And then you added Ted Roof to us this year. Yeah. Maybe what's one big thing that you've taken from some of those guys? You're like, man, this is this is really something that I've latched onto. It's about the players at the end of the day. You know, 
you can be the greatest coach in the world, but if you don't have players that can go out there and execute at a high level and play fast and follow and scheme, schemes and techniques are, are worthless. Wow. Okay, so I could I could go on a whole other show about this, but as much criticism as we give to the coaches over this season, that is the answer. That is the answer right there. At the end of the day, it's not about the X's and O's. It's about the players on the field. You got to get the right players in, the players that are bought into your system, the players that are going to listen to you, players not going to be knuckleheads outside of the locker room, and you got to get guys that are willing to put in the work even when nobody is looking. And it's not all about five stars and four stars. Sometimes you get those. You definitely can get those in two stars and three stars. Clemson has done that many times in development. I would say Clemson is one of the best universities in developing lower star, lower rated players into superstars. But at the end of the day, it goes back to Tony Elliott's point of view. I've said it plenty of times. Tony Elliott, when the right players are out there executing at a high level, he's a top five offense when those right players are out there but not executing at the high level, or maybe the right players aren't out there on the field, it's 108th, you know? So that big of a difference is not just all of a sudden, like Deva Swinney says, not just all of a sudden they forgot how to coach. I mean, the players have to play the games. They have to go out there on the field and want it more than the other team. They have to be able to execute at a high level more than the other team. You can prepare them all the way up until kickoff, and then they have to do what they have to do on the field. Of that, we've heard for a long time that, that Scott Hughes is like a coach on the field. Um, how much is having a guy like him on the field for this bowl game, especially with this transition and the communication, help, help with that? Yeah, it's been unbelievable. Like, Skowski and I have a great relationship, a lot of respect for each other, and just being able to gauge, you know, what we're doing schematically and, you know, the feeling of, of building that sort of deal, he's been invaluable to the process for sure. How important has it been to have so many of these guys out here? You know, a lot of opt-outs in college football, but you've got a you know, pretty full cool roster to work with. Yeah, it, it definitely so, and that's that's a testament to our program that Coach Sweeney's built. You know, the players that we want that you know, I know he talks. We use all in all the time, but honestly, these guys are complete program guys, completely committed. So. That's just a testament to the players that we brought into our program and, and the standard that's been set forth by Coach Lee. Well, sorry, we've been asked about this before, but obviously you're a Tennessee State leader, a baseball guy. Yeah. Guess, what's kind of your background there, and then why ultimately did you decide to switch to football? Yeah, I mean, ever since I was a little kid, I knew I wanted to be involved collegiately or at the professional level in football. And uh, that was just the opportunity that I had to get my foot in the door in the college athletics. And then once I started with baseball, I had the opportunity to transition over into football. And uh, so here we are now. And as a rep. I mean, managers obviously have a lot of kids not to be considered playing right. But what did those experiences you learn in that role teach you for right now? Yeah, I think it teaches you to appreciate everybody's role in the building. You know, whether you're the head coach, you're the janitor, you're the equipment manager, the trainer, everyone's role in the organization is very important. And everyone wants to be appreciated, and you know those those types of roles. You know they don't they don't get all the pub, publicity that I'm getting now, but they're just valuable. And uh, so the, that's probably the biggest thing that I learned from my experience. That's like your interaction with the players. Um, Grant was always such a fiery guy. Is that necessary? Do I feel like you need to do a little bit of that more? Not necessarily. I think all our guys are highly self-motivated players, and you know everyone has their their way of, of reaching guys and motivating. Whether it's out of love or fear, you know that sort of deal. You know I, I have my ways to connect them and uh, just be myself. Yeah, if you change, uh, you're not changing in that direction. So no. So you won't need a get back guy. <laughs> <laughs> no. So. Not to say I won't won't get out on the field, but so. Well, sorry if you've been asked this already, but what do you think about this Wesley Chick? Oh, <laughs> I mean, he was already asked that, but 
it goes back to the question. I think a lot of people want him to be someone that he's not and want him to be the guy that was there. Replacing the guy, stepping into his shoes is very difficult to do. And even for someone who is like me, who would probably fit the more rah-rah type role, um, I'm not I'm not really as aggressive as Brent Venable. So if I was in his position, I could be someone who would probably be rah rah it up right now in this interview and just be, you know, smiling from ear to ear and giving you probably quotable things, probably. Uh, but, I mean, am I analytical enough? No. Have I been studying defenses to the, to the level this guy has? No. Um, have I been practicing speaking in front of people and on a microphone a ton? Yeah, I have. But, um, you know, Brent... Even even though he is also very articulate, he he is to a, a level. When we were experiencing Brent Venables, he was he we saw him develop from a guy who was many thought was was kind of you know questionable whether he would be a good defensive coordinator or not. To then becoming so great that he took over a prime top level program as a head coach not as a defensive coordinator so we saw a guy grow and develop and those these last five years or so Brent Venables has basically been ready not basically he has been ready to be a head coach so we've seen a defensive coordinator coordinator who is basically another head coach we have to kind of go backwards with our think thought process and realize hey you know Brent didn't come in that way and he developed into that so same for Wes so, man, I, I have such great respect for Coach Belichick yeah. and, and all that he's accomplished. And hopefully one day I can live up to, to that nickname. But, uh, I'm going to skip forward even, to that. And, I, I mean, we already. He's now with the New York Giants as uh, Joe's uh, uh, right hand man up there. Do you feel that on practice field one day? Or around the office. Okay. So. What you think? First heard <laughs> I thought, hey, this, that's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> so, it was like four, four Super Bowls before, uh, I guess, less. Then I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> you probably know. You're the one with the <laughs> He's got eight, right? Yeah. Six, yeah. six as a head coach, lost two as an assistant. Lost a couple. Debo said that Brent was trying to take you to Norman. What What were y'all? What position were y'all talking about there? I mean, it wasn't the defensive coordinator and linebacker's job at Clemson. So. Gotcha. <laughs> See, that that is a question. That is the answer. I mean, you know, that's the kind of answer that gets me fired up. Now, a couple of these answers, I'm like, oh, you know, could have done better. I could be very nitpicky with my personality. But that is an answer that is a perfect answer. It was not the defensive coordinator and linebacker coach at uh, Clemson. You know, it was not the role I'm in now. Even if, and he didn't say it wasn't the defensive coordinator at Oklahoma. He just said it wasn't this position, which, I mean, just fires, it can fire anybody up. I mean, but if you're a fan of Clemson and a, a, a player who is interested in going to Clemson, um, you know, you got to be excited. I remember, it's almost exactly 10 years ago, um, I think your GA at the time in West Virginia put 70 on Clemson. So what do you remember about that? <laughs> I've tried to bury that game as far from my memory as possible. No, but seventy-point West Virginia game. Football is like life. Obviously, the best teaching moments are, are when things go wrong. And there's so much to learn yeah. from that game, and just you know whether it was preparation leading up to the game, or maybe how we did things defensively. But uh, just a great learning experience for some some ways to do things different. But what feel like? I think a lot of Clemson fans see that game as the game that obviously got Brent fired. Do you think Clemson's on this trajectory that they're on without that loss? I, I mean, we obviously were recruiting well, starting the foundation with Coach Sweeney and, and had great players coming into the program. I'm trying to think who we were recruiting at the time. But, you know, Clemson's about a program, not necessarily a defense. It's about Coach Sweeney's vision, and then everyone in the building, player-wise, going and executing that vision. So it, it's more than a coach, more than a scheme. It's a vision and buy-in from our players. This game's all about players. Like anything, any other business in life, in life, you're going to win with the people, with people. And, uh, you know, it's about the players and Coach Sweeney's vision.
What about when you were interim coach for that uh, Peach Bowl against LSU? Were you, was that kind of a baptism by fire for you? Yeah, that was a lot of fun. So I think they had what well, they had some great players on that team. Their whole whole defense probably what first or second round draft picks: Laurent, uh, Landry, Odell, ba Odell Beckham, Jeremy Hill. They had a tremendous uh, roster, but that was that was so much fun. You know, probably the first first time where I felt like, hey, you know, I I can go do this at a high level, and just uh, having the guys buy in during that during that time was uh, was an unbelievable experience. One that I'll never forget. I I got Cat Cat and Zero's kick on my wall. <laughs> How, how special it is. Not Nick's catch, just the catch? Yeah, just the catch. <laughs> I know yeah. you said that you wanted to put roots down here, but the draw of the NFL, how strong has that been and how did you kind of avoid it? I mean, I'm a small town guy, so this this is like paradise to me. The lakes, the mountains, big time college football, it doesn't get any better than that to me. So, but you, I mean, Dad would say you've had job offers from the NFL. Were they not, just not quite tempting enough? I'm here, right? <laughs> but, but yeah. Two, 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 three more for left. Coach, do you feel like you're kind of in the middle of a real good story and underdog story considering like where you came from? Yeah, definitely. I mean, this is for sure a dream job. But I think this program from Coach Swinney on down has been built with guys that have had chips on their shoulder and maybe overlooked or whatever. Somebody's had to take a take a take a risk on that. So, you know, I, I, that's kind of how I see bunch of being built along the way. A lot of guys, but a lot to prove. Never mentioned you sort of. Been you know, I think that's a key point too. I mean, when you when you have somebody who's willing to take a risk on you, you want to give it your all. You want to give 110 percent before you touch the rock, kind of thing. And you know, this situation definitely builds up to that. Um, yeah, obviously he's going to get a shot at the Iowa State game to see. We'll get to see what he's what he's uh, what he can produce. But a lot of that stuff's already in place. I, I think it really will. You'll have to see. Kind of, I'd be curious. I'm, I'm going to be. I want to do another one of these once we get after spring practice, and then another one maybe in the fall because I think you'll see some changes there. I think you'll see some maturation in his role. Obviously, he's older than me, so I can't say you know maturation as far as age. But um, I think the in his scenario. Um, you're kind of playing with players that have already been developed throughout an entire season and are at a, at a high level at their championship phase, right? I, I'm interested to see when they restart the cycle in January and start over from that development phase, uh, continuing to recruit in January, and then from that development phase into uh, the spring and then, again, just ramping up to the season into the fall. We'll, we'll see how it goes. Be able to see a player formation just break things down immediately, know what everybody gets from defense is supposed to be running, where people are supposed to be. Is that just formed over your years of coaching, or is your mind just always visiting with staffs around the country and always talking ball, finding out how, finding out ways how to do things better, that sort of deal. So just a lot of preparation, time over the years, and learning from some of the greatest minds in the game. You, know, you, you already talked about this again, Define, but just your relationship with uh, Coach Khan since you've been here, um, how much have you interact and what your rapport is like with him? Yeah, there's there's nobody better than Coach Khan. Just an unbelievable man, great leader of men, has done that at a high level for a long time. Just He's like one of my best, best friends here and just a lot of respect for him and his wife Haley and his two sons. So, I mean, we get along great, uh, both, both unselfish, no egos, so we're going to do what's best for this program and, and uh, for Coach Sweeney. Wow, so he says Mickey Kahn is one of his best friends in the program and that he is confident that they will get along. Uh, I did not know that, that they were that close, and that just makes even more sense. Uh, we'll see what they can do together. Um, again, that's another um, really exciting uh, news. I don't know if anybody has one. 
going to be okay with all this, us bugging you with dumb questions. So, yeah, it's part of it. I signed up for it. So, for sure. You're going to be on time on Mondays? <laughs> that I will. Venables was a little... Yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm a really structured mind. You got over so here much I'm, quicker I'm than down to, to, to a schedule, for sure. <laughs> oh, wow, that's funny. Uh, Larry Williams there with the... Uh, final <laughs> question or comment there that are you going to be on time because Coach Venables wasn't. I remember uh, the few times that I was able to go to practice or wait. And when I say go to practice, the media usually kind of, at least when I was there, usually kind of sits around and waits for the coaches to be done and then answer their questions. And so um, it's one of those situations where if uh, the coach wants to continue practice or continue doing something or continue coaching, which he has the right to do, then the rest of the media is kind of just sitting there waiting and waiting for their time to do their job and then and then go home and continue writing. Well, uh, sometimes I'm sure, in, in the, as, as Larry was mentioning, that Coach Venables took some time, so uh, maybe Wes will be on time compared to the others. But again, I, I think if you look at it all, all together, it's a guy who's in a situation for the first time, probably surrounded by a ton of people, Didn't was the cleanest on some of the questions as far as about himself. But man, when it got into the playbook, the scheme, the preparation, and, and his game plan every single day, and then his confidence and understanding of the linebacking core which a lot of people question but he's been around linebackers for a long time and he's known what he wants to do with his life he's had a progression plan in his mind of what he where he wants to be and at 37 years old he's young he's got an opportunity one of the best opportunities in the nation with college football to be able to be a defensive coordinator linebackers coach at Clemson University we'll see how it all shakes out I hope you enjoyed this video a little bit different than what I normally do I've not really done like a fan reaction ever but this is a fan reaction of Wes Goodwin's first ever interview with the media after practice I think uh, December 18th so let me know in the comments what you think and don't forget to like this video that'll help out with the algorithm and subscribe to the YouTube channel if you're new to here we do a vi we, I try to do videos every single week and then we have a live show that's either broadcast live on Facebook and YouTube or also broadcast live on 1055 975 the roar but again tiger fans we'll see you at the top of the hill. <laughs> <laughs>